Okay, I think this would be one of the first videos on YouTube about this. Well, there are other, other videos on this subject. They're really crummy and they don't show you how to grow good bismuth crystals. The secret to growing beautiful, gigantic bismuth crystals is slow heat crystal growth. Um, what I've actually got here, I took the sand out of my pan. This is a junk pan I got at a thrift store. I fill it half full of sand, not with this in here. Let me take this out. This is my crystal grower. It's been cooling off now for about 40 minutes and I'll show you the result of the crystals. Is I actually fill this half full of sand and then I put it on medium heat for about a half an hour so you end up with really hot sand on the stove. And then what I do is I've actually removed this burner. I've placed it back and I use a stainless dog dish bowl or cat bowl that I get at the pet store. I keep having to having to replace these because once they get encrusted with uh, uh, bismuth uh, scalings, then uh, they're basically impossible to get out. I use some old forks that you can see. <laughs> at the end of this fork, I use this as a stirrer to actually uh, take my bismuth the scalings off. Now I've destroyed this fork, but I hate these forks. Um, I think this is something that belonged to my grandmother. I mean, I've got tons of this stuff to remove my business. You need something to pour the excess off with, and what I use is a, a aluminum can cut into a box, and I've got it lined with clay. Here you can actually see where I actually dropped some of the bismuth onto the plate. But uh, also, you have to use absolutely 100% pure bismuth if you plan on doing this indoors. I turn on the fan. Here's, I wear a pair of gloves. Guess why they've got duct tape on the index finger of this pair of my gloves that I wore? Because I burned a hole in it. Another thing that I also use, I use a gas mask while I'm actually melting my bismuth over top of the stove. Yes, I absolutely kid you not. I stand here fully clothed with a long sleeve shirt on, wearing a gas mask in case I get, not only because of the fumes, pure bismuth is not toxic, but there's always a trace of lead, even though it's 99.9% .9 pure bismuth, but I wear this also to protect my eyeballs. I have this thing against like a molten metal actually flinging into my eyeballs. I don't like that. Now I want to show you the end result. This is what you waited for. This is all cooled down. I use a pair of pliers with my gloves here. My stainless cap bowls. I've been through like four or five of these. You let it cold, it's slowly cool, but you use a seed crystal, and a seed crystal is a seed crystal of bismuth that's at least about 10 millimeters in size. When you place it in there, as it's cooling, as soon as you heat and melt your bismuth, you stick this pan in this other pan with my, uh, my sand in it on medium heat, and you let it slowly cool. You put a piece of fiberglass over top of it, like pink Owens Corning fiberglass with the heat off, once you turn the heat off, obviously you don't want the fiberglass burning on your stove to trap in the heat and you let it cool by itself. But before that happens you have to time it to where you actually take all the extra bismuth and you dump it over here. Once you know your crystal is grown, after you've done it a few times and screwed up, you'll realize when your crystal is fully grown and what you end up with is, let me show you here, the uh, bismuth crystal you'll finally end up with. And this is pretty beautiful. I've got nicer ones than this, but this is the bismuth crystal growth that you get. So this is the raw bismuth. Isn't that a lovely crystal? I have it hanging on copper wire, by the way. So I started out with a seed crystal wrapped in copper wire, which I'll snip. Now I've got a beautiful bismuth uh, crystal. I call this a uh, counterspatial cube because it is an anti-cube, whereas a cube would be spatial. This actually forms as an anti-cube or a hypercube. Let me show you something else. I've actually used these for experimentation. I use a lead sinker weight holder and I made another one of these. I cover it with the clay to keep the bismuth from pouring out. And this one's cool. Now I've got a solid bismuth bowl here for experimentation. And I use, I bought this used off of eBay. And I plug it up with clay so that when I pour it in, and since it doesn't actually hold perfectly flush clothes where I pour my liquid bismuth in here, to seal up all these cracks, I just actually cover them with clay. And it gives enough time for the bismuth to cool down. 
and this is really heavy this is heavier than lead all bismuth by the way is a depleted neptunium just as lead is depleted uranium this uh, bismuth uh, is the universe's most stable element it's also the universe's most diamagnetic element but all bismuth is depleted neptunium which by the way uh, the Department of Defense discovered back in the 1950s is fissionable not bismuth uh, neptunium is fissionable to uh, make a nuclear bombs just as uranium is uh, that was a top secret document that was declassified something like 15 years ago or something that bismuth I mean excuse me that uh, neptunium is fissionable look at all my little bismuth scraps I have here laying on the table I mean not the table but my uh, Sometimes, see, bismuth splatters. This is why I wear a, a gas mask. I don't want molten bismuth splattering into my eyeballs, so. And you can see here what my pan looks like. That uh, Those are bismuth scalings. So, but the end result is growing these very beautiful bismuth crystals. I mean, you can't tell me that's not gorgeous. I mean, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous! Gorgeous bismuth crystals. I accidentally scraped it there. So there you go. It's all about slow heat, baby. Slowly cooling, but you have to pour off the excess bismuth before it completely solidifies. But you have to have enough time for it to slowly cool enough to grow a crystal. So thanks for watching, and this is uh, molten metals on your stovetop. And do not do this, and do not sue me because this is dangerous as piss. And if you don't use pure bismuth, then you'll have rancidly toxic chemicals that you're breathing into your lungs, or you'll get if it comes in contact with water. While any a drop of water that comes into contact with molten bismuth will cause it to splatter and then you'll have literally molten metal shooting into your face and uh, we're talking insanely dangerous but uh, anyway this is always why I use a gas mask when melting bismuth on the stovetop so maybe I'll have a couple bismuth crystals in a giveaway contest thanks for watching catch you later bye this is called cooking bismuth on the stove bye